Hello guys. I figure that anybody who has been watching some of my stuff and has seen this gun before uh, on a couple of my other videos, um, I'll have a few more out here fairly quickly, might want to know how it works. Because there, there aren't actually a whole lot of guns. Pull this forward a little bit. There aren't actually a whole lot of guns out there that operate on this principle. And it's for good reason. This is not the most efficient way to build an air gun. But it does actually achieve a few things that other air guns don't. And uh, mostly that is being that it can run on much lower pressures than a standard big bore air gun and still achieve a usable velocity. It's not like, uh, it's not one of those heavy duty uh, big game hunting air guns or anything like that. I could hunt bigger game with it, but I'd have to be pretty close. So anyways, I've got some of it removed. I want to show you how the action and everything works. First of all, I've got this is pretty much a full breakdown video. So on the top of the gun here, I've got four bolts. See them there. And those four bolts simply loosen. You can see the slot here. This allows those bolts to pull this tight against the barrel. And the barrel is just, I've got it loose already here. It's just a regular rifle barrel that's been turned down to three quarters of an inch. So this is three quarters of an inch here. And this is the barrel diameter. This is the barrel you saw in my first couple of videos that was a hexagon. I've just turned it down in the lathe so it's much less, uh, it's less, uh, it's lighter. And then on the inside here, uh, this is a black powder barrel, so I cut the end off of it. And on the inside here, I've turned the inside of it out so that I can have a spot to put the bullet that's bigger or slightly bigger than the diameter of the bullet. That way I'm not trying to shove the shove the bullet into the rifling by hand. It just it would be very difficult. So that's the barrel broken down. I can change out the barrel to basically any size I want so long as I have this three-quarter inch piece on the back of it. I've loosened the scope here already because everybody knows what a scope is. I'll just take this off. Graceful. And then because these things add a lot of weight, I'm going to take the tank off here in a minute. But in order to fire this gun, what happens is the tank threads in, just threads into a regular um, connector for off of paintball or whatever. And this is just a, a thread valve. So when I thread this in, it opens the tank valve and adds air to the gun. In, the, in, the, in here, you can see this connector hose here connects the tank to the uh, pressure chamber. The pressure chamber is this portion of the gun and it charges up to whatever the tank pressure is. It's currently set at 800 PSI. So this will charge up to the tank pressure and then uh, the when I fire it, it will drain all the air that's inside of this chamber independent of the tank and then when I recharge it, it will fill this tank again. Um, this lever here, when it's pulled back, opens the valve to fill this tank. And I'll show you how that works here on another uh, piece of the video. I'll inset it in. Um, the trigger operates simply by opening a valve that's under this block right here. This is the trigger block and there's a there's a valve in the back of here that releases the pressure. And I'll show you how that works in a little bit, but just the trigger just basically opens that valve. It just pushes on it. And this is one thing I'm probably going to change because this action is a pretty heavy duty action for uh, anything you want to try and be accurate with. It requires you to open this valve fairly quickly. Um, basically, you have to jerk the trigger to fire the gun uh, consistently or at full power. So I'm going to change this out to something that, that fires either an air trigger or maybe a solenoid electric trigger. So I'm going to take this air tank off to make this easier to work with. All right, and then we're going to turn this around and I'll show you uh, the action of all these things. Of course, this what I didn't show you a minute ago is this is just a, a falling block action. So when I drop this block down, I'm able to load a pellet into the barrel through the hole you can see here. And that's where the barrel, the end of the barrel will be visible right there with the barrels in. So that's the falling block and this is the charge handle. We'll turn this around now. So you can see in here how this works. Let me get this nice and close for you. So the charge handle, this is an offset angle. So when this when this is up, I don't know if there's the correct term for it, but when this is up, there's a spring that's housed right in here inside of this. And as you can see the little button right there that gets pushed against this uh, pin. And when I pull the lever down, the distance between here and the center line of this gets shorter. So it creates pressure against it. You can see it compressing this here, right? And that's that's what holds the, the block up 
into this taper. This is tapered so that the block fits cleanly into the taper. So when I push on it, it slides up and locks in. You can see that it kind of wants to be there, right? So I just lock that up, boom. And then there's a hole drilled through this block that goes from this chamber to this chamber. It's actually slightly angled upwards because the barrel is higher up than the center line of this chamber. So that operates like this. And it's pretty smooth. I need to put a little more grease on it. Now the, uh, the recharge handle, I can pull it from this side. You can see it actuating there, pushes this pin. And this pin slides back and opens a valve that's in here that, that adds pressure to the gun. So I pull this back, it just pushes on that valve. And there's no pressure on the valve right now, so the valve doesn't spring back. But when the valve is under air pressure, this pin will spring back up against there to close. Again, this, this is just sealed on a poppet style valve. Okay. And once again, I'll get a video underneath this on how that, that works. So that's the basic operation. You can see the trigger bar there going up into the trigger block. It's just a lever. And uh, that, that's the basic principle of the operation, the exterior operation of this gun. I'm going to take this chamber off. I'm going to take the trigger block off so you can see what's going on in there. And then you can see how this portion of the gun works mechanically. This is a, uh, a quick little clip on how this valve actuates. This pin here is the uh, pressure inlet pin. We've got the lever here, which has a bearing. It pushes on that pin. And you can see the screw there keeps this lever from going too far. I don't want the bearing to go past center on this pin, otherwise it's hard to return under pressure. So when pressure is added to the gun, like it is now, I push this, and you can see it starts to push that valve in, and it goes to there, and it, and it allows air pressure to go into the gun. The gun charges, okay? And I return it when I want to fire, right? And then when I fire, it just lets that air back out of the gun. It fills very quickly. The, in that amount of time, the gun basically it was full. So that's all it takes. And once the gun is under pressure, this is very hard to open. It can still be done, but it's, it's hard, to, hard to open that under pressure. Now we're going to move on to the main valve portion of this gun. This is the dump valve here. There's a chamber inside of here, which we're going to get to in a minute. But when the gun is fired, it's called a dump valve because it dumps all the air that's inside of this, volume, this set volume chamber down the barrel. So the, the back of the valve, this portion here, this block, which is about three times thicker than it really needs to be. Just everything's extra heavy because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do things when I started. I didn't, I engineered this more step by step with a, I had a concept in my head and I engineered it kind of step by step as opposed to, uh, to having it all drawn on CAD or something of that nature. And, uh, and then I changed some things along the way. So anyways, I got four quarter 20 screws, which I've already removed all of this one with a heavy thread engagement. And quarter 20 screws are good for, uh, I think about 1700 pounds or so. So I've got four of them in here with 800 PSI inside this chamber. I'm only getting about you know, something like 1400 pounds, something like that. So not really that much pressure against these screws. So I got plenty of strength. If I, if I brought this chamber up to 4,000 PSI, maybe it would start to be, uh, start to put some actual stress on those screws, but I'm never going to go there. So it's not a problem. Anyway, so this back portion of the gun comes off and we can see how this operates. The air comes in through the pipe from the tank. It goes through this fitting here, which is just that press fit fitting. And it seals inside of this portion of the gun. There's just a little space in there for the fitting. And there's a valve here. You can see the pin there. And when you push on that pin, it's just sprung forward. And that pin is just got a little rubber seal and it seals this closed. So the air can't go through unless this pin is pushed. To push that pin, it's, it uses this side lever here, which we've seen on earlier portions and the way it actuates. And it pushes this pin here out, and you can see it sticking out in here. And this, this side of it just pushes this pin into the high pressure zone and allows air to vent through. The air travels around the pin, up through this little tiny channel, and it pushes, this is the trigger pin, which works in the uh, valve, which works basically in the same concept as this lower valve here, right there. And it seals an O-ring against there. So you can see the trigger valve here. It's got some channels around it to allow air to vent around it. There's an O-ring there. Sorry about the focus. O-ring there. And that O-ring just seals against the inner lip of this valve. A little step in there. So when that goes in there, it seals. And in the, in the firing position, this is sealed in the back of, the, of that pin is sticking out that way. When it's fired, 
all it does is push this down and it vents this side, the high pressure side to the atmosphere. On the back side here, I've got a, uh, a gauge just to be able to read the interior pressure of the gun. It's, it's got a tiny hole that goes to the high pressure system side of the system. Inside the dump valve, tight, built it tight. It just has this one moving portion. This is a free floating valve. It's got an O-ring on the back that seals. Uh, when necessary, when it when it's on the open position, and then it's got an O-ring on the front, which seals against the hole you can see in there. This is the the main chamber where all the pressure store. So when the air comes up this channel, it seals the trigger closed, and then it goes through that hole right there, pushes this piston forward about halfway. The front of the piston engages that hole and seals it under pressure. The pressure keeps it sealed and that hole vents out to the barrel. And then the extra air leaks around the piston, which is, I made this piston intentionally small, uh, undersized, so it's a little bit loose. The air leaks around that piston and fills up this chamber with whatever pressure I'm using. So now the valve is balanced. The, there's balance, there's pressure on this side, high pressure air on this side, there's high pressure air behind the piston, and there's high pressure air in all this free space minimal free space, but free space it is behind here. And that's holding this, this valve closed as well. When, it, when the gun is fired, it vents, I, the trigger is pulled, it, it opens the valve, it vents all the pressure behind this piston. And that pressure is now, the air in there is now moving and it creates a low pressure zone, lower pressure than atmosphere. And this falls, the piston opens and falls into the low pressure zone. And then the O-ring here seals it to keep from letting any extra air out. And it's also kind of a bumper so that the valve's not slamming into the aluminum every time. And then all the air inside the chamber vents out the barrel through that hole and pushes the bullet down the barrel. That's the basic concept behind it. This valve design, uh, the concept behind this valve design is not mine. Uh, I don't remember where I got it. It was about 15 years ago that I built my first gun using this type of valve. It's been around a while. Obviously, I'd like to give credit where it's due, but I'm not sure who originated the valve. So whoever you are, thanks for designing a good valve concept. Um, but I'm not sure if it's been used in this system before. This is probably one of the more complex dump valve guns that's ever been built. I've never seen anything like it. And it works quite well on fairly low pressures. I'm getting, it's a 45 caliber. When I use my, my big barrel here, I've got a 45 caliber barrel. And I'm shooting... Uh, 45 caliber round balls, which are about 140 grains at 600 feet per second with 800 PSI in this gun, which is, is pretty good for such a low pressure. I, you crank it up to 800 PSI by hand with a, a leather sealed hand pump, uh, like the old Giordani uh, air rifles that they used for Lewis and Clark and that sort of thing. You look those up, they're really cool. But anyways, um, that's the basic concept behind this gun. It was a, a good educational project. I learned a lot. I've got some other good ideas coming. Thank you for watching. And uh, I do appreciate uh, those of you who have chosen to subscribe to my channel. I'm really trying to get this started and I'll get some more, uh, some more good videos up soon. I'm building stuff all the time. I'm never sure, sure what I'm going to do next. So I do really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And uh, I hope you guys have fun and maybe you learned something too.